east side, west side, doesn't matter what side you're on because you're on the best side and welcome to episode 39 of The Best Side. I am your host today, Daniel Kellum, and how's everyone's week going? How's everyone's week going out there? Sorry, I said that awful. Um, yeah, we got a great show for you all today, uh, very fun things to talk about. And are we going? Yeah, I'm just making sure that I'm going. All right. Yeah, let's get into it. Um, yeah. We have a birthday today. We have one birthday today that I found on here. And um, pretty significant birthday. And that is Julius Caesar Happy birthday, Julius Caesar, born in 100 BC and died in 44 BC. He was assassinated, the whole Ides of March thing. He was, uh, I think I'm a little high here. I want to get down. I want to get down. I want to go lower. Can I go lower in this thing? I'm not doing the the, the, uh, chair. I'm doing the creaky. I guess I'll just have to hunch over this episode. All right. Um, Yeah, yeah. Julius Caesar's birthday. Um, a very significant figure in history. If you're remembered for over 2,000 years, then I'd say you were a pretty famous guy, right? Yeah. I haven't pooped in like two or three days, and I'm very concerned. I'm very bloated. If I showed you all my stomach right now, you'd be like, wow, he is full of poop. And it's true, I am. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to play basketball tonight, so I'm hoping that um, it kind of loosens me up and kind of unplugs me, if you get what I mean. Um, I think just moving around will help will help uh, unlodge, unclog everything. And um, yeah, Julius Caesar's birthday. Uh, my favorite fact about him, well, I have two favorite facts about him. One is that he knocked up Cleopatra, uh, the... Queen of Egypt, Queen of Egypt. Why did I say that weird? And another one was when he was kidnapped when he was in his twenties. I want to read this excerpt for you all. Um, sorry, Ralph. I'm going to read this. Uh, he was kidnapped by pirates in 75 BC. Caesar, then in his mid twenties, set out from Rome for the Aegean island of Rhodes, a noted center of learning, where he planned to study with Ap- Apollonius, a Greek rhetorician whose students had included Cicero, who became one of ancient Rome's most famous orators. Orators. I'm not an orator. However, along the way to Rhodes, Caesar's ship was hijacked by pirates off of the southwestern coast of Asia Minor. When his captors named a ransom price for his release, Caesar thought the number was insultingly low and insisted a greater sum be demanded. Eventually, the higher figure was raised and Caesar was freed. Soon after, he sought revenge against his former captors by commandeering a group of ships and men to help him hunt down and swiftly capture the buccaneers who he then had executed. He also became friends with the pirates on the ship is what I read and uh, just a really fun story about him. Um, Yeah, and then he was assassinated by, I think it was like 27 people. Uh, No, he got stabbed like 23 times, I think. Um, and then one was like in the artery, which was fatal. Um, yeah, that was that must have been quite the sight to see. Apparently, you can go to the site where he was assassinated and look at the ruins of the area where he was assassinated. That must be a cool. Um, that must be a cool area to go see. A lot of history there. Um, yeah. So happy birthday, Julius Caesar. Um, and if you're watching this, happy birthday. All right, on to the next. My my melted iced coffee. So, yeah. So, on the, um, Aliens subreddit... This past week, 
a big post came and um, it's about this guy who was a molecular bio- molecular biologist for the national security contractor for a national security contractor. He got uh, hired to do this study in this program to study exobiospheric organisms, EBO. He basically says that um, he examined alien tissue, extraterrestrial tissue, but he called it EBO, exobiospheric organisms. It's a long read. Um, it's in the aliens subreddit on Reddit. And if you have time, if you're in bed, you want to get a little uh, weird, think about some things. It's a good read. And um, this guy or this person um, seems very... Uh, uh, it seems like they know what they're talking about when it comes to molecular stuff. Um, if it's a lie, then wow, congratulations to them. But uh, this is very, very interesting and riveting stuff. Like I'm scrolling through right now, it's very, it's pretty long. But if you want to get your sink your teeth into something, um, he goes into everything about these about these bodies and tissue that he or they I shouldn't keep saying he. It could be a she. Um, that they discovered or not, that they studied. So, um, yeah, some highlights from it is that the the gray thing, the gray their gray skin, um, is a film that was over them, and they can take it off. Same thing with the big black eyes. It was it's helping them. Uh, he, this person is is claiming that. It's also like a, a film over their eyes to help them see. They have good night vision, and maybe they're and so the sun is kind of sensitive. They're sensitive to the sun, I think, is what this person was saying. And when you take those off, they have pu- like eyes like us, pupils like us. Um, and yeah, very uh, he, he compares it to gray. They know the gray aliens. Who are in the uh, Zeta Reticuli area in the Zeta Reticuli galaxy? I think it's a galaxy. Um, their morphology very similar to the gray aliens that are part of modern folklore. Their height is about 150 centimeters, and they have two arms, two legs, and a head. So um, it's a bi- yeah. The gray skin that's often described in the folklore is in fact a biosynthetic film, which serves the which serves them from a hostile environment. Uh, yeah, and then their ears are like holes. Nose are just holes. Um, you guys hearing that? I'm getting a bunch of emails. Hands and feet. This, this person says hands and feet. They have four digits, including a opposable thumb on the medial side. No nails, and the texture of their fingerprints is composed of is composed of concentric circles. Fingers are proportionally much longer than in humans. Um, yeah. Very, jeez. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Yeah, the blood itself is analogous to that of a human. However, the proportion of plasma is much higher. So just, if you got time, read it. This person worked there from the 2000s to the mid to 2010s. Um, feel free to ask questions or for clarification. And it is... It's pretty interesting stuff. So that's my little weird thing to talk about this week. Alien stuff. I want to keep it alive. I want to keep the idea of disclosure alive to people. I know it wants to get swept under the rug. I know the government wants you to forget about it, you know. Here's my tinfoil hat. I'm I may be going crazy, but it doesn't mean I'm wrong. All right. Um film. Film, film, film. So um yesterday, I believe it was yesterday. Today is the twelfth. So yesterday the eleventh. Um or was it the day before? Anyways, that doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to this. Um, the new Wonka 
movie trailer came out starring uh, Timothy Chalamet, very uh, talented young uh, small actor, and um, yeah, it does not look that good. Um, someone said it basically just looks like, looks like Fantastic Beast, but with chocolate. Um, I actually liked I liked the first Fantastic Beast, but then they got bad. But that's what the the look of this movie looks like. It just looks like Fantastic Beasts, but with chocolate. And I don't think it was the right role to cast. I don't think it was the right casting for Timothy Chalamet to play Willy Wonka. I don't think he's whimsy enough. Um, I don't think he is. Uh, I just don't think he fits that role that Gene Wilder. Uh, and for that matter, Johnny Depp didn't really do a good job either at that. So, um Maybe we're just too busy thinking about Gene Wilder here because he just killed that role, but I don't think Timothy Chalamet is right for this role. I don't think that movie, I don't think this Wonka movie is going to be that good um, based on the trailer. So, um, however, I could be wrong. I said that about Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, and I was wrong. And so this got me thinking to. Um, movie trailers and I was just thinking like what have been some of my favorite movie trailers of all time so I made a a collection a list uh, a catalog if you will um, of my favorite movie trailers so let's get into some of them this is not a countdown I just wanted to do 10 of my favorites so I'll go down I'll start over here so again this is not a ranking you can rank them if you want, but these are just my favorites that I've always liked. Whether the movie turned, you know, this is, this is not, I want to also distinguish these are not my, you know, some of these are my favorite movies, but some of these movies turned out to not be so good. And, um, uh, but I just really love the trailers. It takes a lot of skill to make a good movie trailer, to hook the audience. Because what, what does a movie trailer need? It needs to hook you, needs to get you excited. Um, needs to not show too much, can't show too much stuff, uh, things like that. You know, it has to have those components to, to it. So here's the first one, and it is from the 2011 action fantasy movie Immortals, starring a young Henry Cavill as Theseus, Mickey Rourke as King Hyperion. Um, uh, yeah, and yet, again, watch these trailers when I say, when I say them. You know, if you want to go watch them. See what I'm talking about. These are good movie trailers. I remember when I watched this, the whole tagline for this was it came out on 11, 11, 11, November 11, 2011. I mean, that wasn't a tagline, but that was like the big marketing thing, you know, on 11, 11, 11, come see this movie. That's just what I associate this movie as. And I, and I actually like, it doesn't have good ratings, but I actually love fantasy action movies. And um, this was by the same people that did 300. So it kind of has that 300 look. And um, I actually really liked it. I saw it in theaters. Power Hungry King, Hyperion, Ricky Rourke, and his ruthless army march across Greece, leaving burned out villages and the corpses of the innocent in their wake. Hyperion's goal is to find the long lost bow of, of Epirus, Epirus. With this invincible weapon, he can cast the gods out of Mount Olympus and become a master of the world. But Henry Cavill stops him. So, Immortals, 2011. The next one is Battle Los Angeles. Uh, this also came out in 2011 and is about like aliens invading Earth and these Marines, they're Marines, right? Uh, yeah, this uh, these Marines, starring Aaron Eckhart, uh, stop uh, these, these invading aliens and the movie's centered in Los Angeles. Again, movie did not do very, you know, the reviews were not that good. But I remember being pretty entertained in the theaters. You know, it was a good summer entertainment movie. Uh, oh no, it wasn't a summer. It was released in March. But it was a good entertaining movie that um, that uh, I actually enjoyed. You know, and then you know I wouldn't really. It's one of those movies that like you got to see in theaters, I guess, when it's new. Because I don't really. I didn't. It's it's it was on cable the other day, but um, it didn't really. It hasn't aged well to tell you the truth. And, um, but when I first saw it, I was entertained, but yeah, uh, hasn't really aged that well. Um, next one, 
Interstellar. Now, this is a, of course, an amazing movie. Um, starring Matthew McConaughey, directed by the great Christopher Nolan. Oppenheimer's coming out soon. Get your Barbie tickets while you can. And, um, yeah, this movie, uh, I remember seeing the trailer for this movie. Um, and I was like, what the hell? Like this, it left a lot to the imagination as well. That's what, um, I think that's what I said earlier, what a good trailer does. And that's what this has done. That's what this did when I first saw it. So, um, yeah, Interstellar. Okay, next one on the list is Man of Steel with Henry, Henry, is it Cavill or Cavill? Um, with, with him again as, as the, as the, the tight, is it titular, titular, the title character, Superman, Clark Kent, um, you know, a Superman movie in the last Superman movie made was, was Christopher Reeves right before this, like live action. So when this came out, people were pumped to see Superman again. And it was a very inspiring, um, a uh, very inspiring movie trailer that came out. So, uh, Man of Steel, 2013. Uh, I enjoyed that one. And then, ooh, this one was also fun. It was from 2008, the science fiction action movie, uh, found footage movie, Cloverfield. Um, Cloverfield. Uh, yeah, this this was another movie that I enjoyed in theaters, um, and it got and it got good reviews as well. Um, yeah, it's like a found one of those found footage movies, like Blair Witch Project style, you know, where it's like shaky cam. And uh, but this one is about this giant creature attacking New York City, and um, I really enjoy it. Uh, and it, the, the what made it so the trailer so fun was because it was before Transformers when Transformers came out. And people were just excited to see Transformers. And then when you, when this trailer came on the theaters, you're like, okay, what is this? It's just like, it's just, it starts with like a party, like a, you know, found, you know, like recording a, a like a house party. And then suddenly shit goes wrong. And, uh, it was, um, I remember seeing it and it was like, what the hell is this movie? This looks really good. Uh, so Cloverfield, here we go. The next one. Oh, is the Star Wars, the force awakens. Uh, from 2015, uh, say what you will. This is episode seven. Say what you will about the movies and the whole, uh, um, what is this called? The Skywalker trilogy or something. Say what you want about these new sequel trilogies. You know, they, it was pretty bad. They were pretty bad, but the hype and the, and the, and the excitement when this trailer came out was unparalleled. It was amazing. Um, one of the greatest movie trailers of all time, Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Um, and then this one, the 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 movie lived up to the hype. Another science fiction uh, action adventure movie, <clears throat> Avengers: Infinity War. Uh, this trailer was fucking amazing as well. And then the movie was amazing. The movie itself is one of the greatest movies of all time, let alone greatest uh, comic book movies of all time. So. Um, yeah, it was it was quite an event. The trailer was an event. Uh, people were cheering and things like that. So um, yeah, Avengers Infinity. And then when the End Game trailer came out, people already knew, you know, kind of the deal with it. But they were still excited. But when this first one came out, it was amazing. Now this one, um, this movie actually did get good reviews, but I don't think a lot of people saw it. Um, and that is from 2012. Cloud Atlas. This is one of my favorite movie trailers of all time because it's like, what the fuck is this movie? And and the the song in it is really good. When I remember when it first came out, and uh, and yeah, it's 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 an interesting movie about um, lives that impact one another from the past, present, and future, and it's got Tom Hanks. So, um, yeah, it's got a huge cast, not only Tom Hanks, but a big cast. And, um, yeah, the Wachowski, Lana and Lily Wachowski directed it. So, you know, it's going to have that vibe. So, um, yeah, 
Yeah, Cloud Atlas. We got two more here. And this one is from 2014. And... um. Uh, this one was again, seeing it in movie theaters, the trailer came out was amazing. And that is Godzilla. And in the trailer, the 2014 Godzilla, not the Matthew Broderick. And this, in this movie trailer, it's Brian Cranston. Um, and he is, uh, like narrating, you know, lines from the movie and he's just killing it. He's doing a great job. And, um, and just again, it doesn't show too much of the monster of Godzilla. You know, it gives you a little taste, a little teaser. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing movie trailer. And the, and, and the, you know, the movie itself was pretty, uh, was pretty good too, honestly. But yeah, they actually, I think they actually did Godzilla right in that one. It was just, um, I, I like Godzilla vs Kong, honestly. I can't wait for the the next one coming out. So, um, yeah, Godzilla. And then the f- the final one. Um, this movie is one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, Two thousand eight, and that is The Dark Knight, starring Christian Bale, the late Heath Ledger, Gary Oldman, Aaron Eckhart, Morgan Freeman, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Where's Michael Caine? Where's Michael Caine? And when the Joker first came on to the screen, Heath Ledger Joker, you were like, fuck. What an amazing this is gonna be an amazing movie. The hype for this was 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 unmatched. And then Heath Ledger died. And so I was like, Oh man, this movie's gonna just blow everything away. And um Yeah. Still an amazing, amazing movie. Um Yeah, I remember showing my girlfriend this for the first time, and she was like, "This is really good." Yeah, um, yeah. So those are my ten, ten of my favorite movie trailers. Are we still recording? Yeah, ten of my favorite movie trailers. There it is. So here, let's end with the. Uh... All right, all right. Now we on to the. Questions. One more. I need a drink. Okay, okay, okay. We have how many questions? We have three questions this week. I like it. I like it. First one is Brian from Roseville. Hey, Daniel. Last week, you were talking about how the surface temperature of the Earth reached the hottest in recorded history. Yikes, bitch. You also questioned if it is the hottest ever. Well, I did some research, bitch, and found this. The fact that these thick, calcium-rich rock layers sat directly on top of rock deposits left behind by retreating glaciers indicate that temperatures rose significantly near the end of the Neoprotozoic perhaps reaching a global average higher than 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have a question, bitch. Just wanted to share something that some scientists believe. Okay. I guess, I guess the question is, does that count as recorded history? Maybe, maybe they meant recorded human history, I think. Um, Right. Um, But that is interesting. Um, oh yeah, I don't have a question, bitch. Just want to share something that some scientists believe. From Brian, sent from an air conditioning building. Sent from an air conditioning building. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it was hot. I mean, we're, but humans weren't on Earth then, right? So, um, maybe that's what they mean. You know, when they say. Um, recorded history. So, is it a fact? Is is that a fact though, or do they do these scientists believe it, or or is that a? Um, anyways, yeah, very interesting. Could you imagine that? 
an average, a global average higher than 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine living on earth? Fuck that. Would anything be living at that point? I don't know. Um, here we go. Okay. Kyle from Tracy. Hey, first base. Hey, first base, Dan. Even though I hate baseball, Bud Manfred and John Fisher, fuck John Fisher, I'm always excited for the home run derby. If you could field your all time eight home run derby contestants, who would you pick? Off the top of my head, I'm picking Ken Griffey Jr., Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Jonas Cespedes, Prince Fielder, Vlad Guerrero Jr., and Sr., and Bryce Harper. All guys with crazy power and swagger. Excited to hear your answer. Also, fuck John Fisher. Hashtag sell the team. Play ball. Kyle from Tracy. Sent from John Fisher's mom's house. Okay. We have te- we have. I got to pick eight home run derby contestants, and luckily I did that, Kyle. So here are my eight. Number uh, Again, not a countdown, just my eight. I have David Ortiz, Big Poppy, Jose Canseco, roided up uh, Jose Canseco. By the way, all these players should be roided up. David Ortiz, Jose Canseco, Ken Griffey Jr., Sammy Sosa, uh, Vlad Guerrero Sr., uh, Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, we have a few. And then for my eighth one, I want to put Babe Ruth in there. I want to see how Babe Ruth would stack up with these players, you know. Um yeah, I was gonna, I was thinking about doing like Hank Aaron or Mickey Mantle, but I but I rounded out with David Ortiz, but uh, I I want to have like an old player in there, so I gotta have Babe Ruth in there. So uh, those are my eight for you, Kyle. Those are my eight. We have some some similar ones. Yeah, Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Vlad, Griffey. Yeah, but yeah, I want to see even like Mickey Mantle. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, just seeing really old players do it would be fun. Um, thanks for writing in, Kyle. And then finally, here's another one from Brian from Roseville. The Wilhelm Scream. It was officially given its name with the minor character of Private Wilhelm in The Charge at Feather River, a western that came out July 11th, 1953. In that movie, Wilhelm, played by actor Ralph Brooks, screams after being shot in the thigh with an arrow, which would come to defy its use. In all of its appearances in future media, it would be used when someone got shot, blasted by an explosion, or fell from a high distance. Neat. Hopefully it's royalty-free and you can play it on the pod. Unfortunately, Brian, it is not royalty-free. It is still, um, it is not public domain, so... Um, but it's that sound when you go, ah! you know, it's in like a bunch of movies and uh, it's become this iconic sound in a bunch of movies. Um, and yeah, so it's it was its birthday yesterday, 1953. So um, what does that make it? 70 years old? Fuck. So um Yeah, happy birthday. Happy 70th birthday, Wilhelm Scream. Um, Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. So, happy birthday, Wilhelm Scream. Happy birthday, uh, Julius Caesar. (laughs) Um, Yeah, those are all the questions. So, thank you for writing in, Kyle and Brian. Um, If we can have, if we can get four questions, that would be amazing. Or concerns. Or comments like the uh, like the temperature one Brian wrote in. That's very interesting, and um, yeah, things like that. So um, talked about everything. Yeah, talked about all I needed to talk about. I was gonna do a story today, but um, it, I didn't really feel it was good. It was good enough. So I want to kind of work on the storytelling and give you guys a really. Uh, interesting story here coming up so yeah a little coffee break oh that's terrible that is absolutely terrible when it's all melted and warm oh man uh it's good coffee when it's fresh though it's the pike's place uh starbucks pod and then espresso is an espresso yeah so um yeah, I think that's that's the podcast for today. Um, hope you enjoyed today. We, uh, today was a really fun episode. Really, 
a uh, really fun structured episode. Uh, I, I, I found a Ralph, I found a birthday in there and I, and I just went with it, you know, uh, I, I did read some articles, but it's, it, it is interesting. And I want, oh, I need a quote. I need to, that was from history.com was from the things I was reading. And, um, yeah, so I, I did do some reading today. Sorry. Sorry, Ralph. And, um, uh, but I think, I think it was pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting. This is a history podcast. This is a culture podcast, a comedy podcast, maybe a movie podcast, um, a water drinking podcast. Mm-mm-mm. So things like that. So um, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Next week is episode 40. That is insane. Uh, that it's episode 40 next week. And if you're out there and if you listen to every single episode, thank you so much. Um, I really do appreciate you for listening. And, um, you know, there's nothing much else I can say, but I just really do appreciate you all for tuning in every week, or if you don't tune in every week, if you just listen, if you, even if you've listened for five seconds and you're like, this guy sucks, this guy fucking sucks. Let me go back to Joe Rogan or something. Uh, thank you for tuning in and next week I'll have another fun episode for you all to keep you engaged, keep you entertained, keep you aroused and that's it. Goodbye.